Moms who know do less so they can focus on what matters most, taking care of themselves, their families, and living their God-given purpose. Moms who know focus on the little things they can do that grow to have a huge impact. You are connecting with your family, your true self, and your God-given purpose. You are a mom who knows. Thanks for joining me today on the Moms Who Know podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen, and today I am going to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot lately, which is what I wish I would have known as a young mom. So at this point in my journey, I have five kids, I have two teenagers, and then um, we had our, our special little bonus baby, and so we're kind of doing it all again, and I feel like I'm in a unique position to... Um, you know, I have a unique perspective because I am an older mom, but I'm a young mom at the same time because I, I am parenting a three-year-old. So I'm going to go through today five things that I wish I would have known when I was a young mom. So I'm going to talk about what I would focus on most, especially in those first years when you have an infant and a baby, what I would say yes to more often, what I would say no to more often, the mindset shift I wish I would have made a little bit earlier, and the habits that I would start right away when I was a young mom. So we're going to go through each of these. So what I would focus on the most if I was starting all over again. First, I think that for me, I had my first daughter right out of college and I was going from just being busy and involved and social and having all these things and I went to being a stay-at-home mom with a little baby and it was really um, a culture shock for me. And so if I could go back, I would encourage myself back then to really find something every day that makes me feel like me. So find something every day that makes you feel like you, that you just enjoy, that that lights you up, that gets you excited. That is the true definition of self-care to me. Something that you do just for the pleasure of doing it, just because you enjoy it. And it might be something that's fun. It might be something that's more work related. It might be a project. It could be anything, but just something that you do that makes you feel like, yeah, this is what I want to be doing. This is who I am. And when you're in that early phase of motherhood, this isn't going to look like hours on end of, of doing those things. It might be five minutes here and there that you carve out, you know, ask your husband, can I just have a few minutes to go and work on this or to go do this one thing. And that can be really powerful because it's not so much the thing that you're doing. It's the way that you feel and it's letting yourself feel like a whole person with dreams and goals and remembering um, yourself as a person instead of yourself as an accessory to this little human that you're raising. So I, I think that would have been really valuable for me early on. I know that when you are in the trenches and you have a little baby, your baby's needs have to come first. And I think that's where we get lost a lot of times because we know, okay, I have this baby and I have to give all my time to this baby. But what I would encourage you to do is to carve out just a little bit of time for yourself to do something that you love. Another thing that I would add in this thing that I would focus on in the in the first couple of years is to be really careful and really selective about social media use. Because when you have a baby and all the hormones are going and your hair is a mess and your house is a mess and your clothes don't fit and all these things, looking at social media, at least for me, can be really detrimental. And to see that other people are out there having fun, other people look put together when my own life feels not put together can be really painful. And so I would be really careful about who you are following and pay attention to what that does for you and how that makes you feel. And another quick thought on social media is this. Sometimes as moms, when we don't have a lot of time to ourselves, and when we do get a few minutes, we're like, I'll just go on my phone and go on social media. That's actually not self-care. That doesn't give us that fuel and 
and really give us what we need. And so that's another reason we need to be selective about our social media use and our social media time. It's There's definitely a place for it. I'm on social media. I am not saying to get off of social media necessarily, but what I am saying is to make sure that you have something besides social media for your self-care and and for doing something for yourself. And another powerful thing when kids are young is to seek connection, especially with other women. Look for play dates or, you know, at our local library, we have a great program or other things that you can do with your little ones in tow to get with other moms, to get with other women who are in the trenches with you and know what you are going through so you don't feel so alone. That connection is so important. I've mentioned this before, but another way that I've done this when my kids are little is I always have a good stroller and I always get a group of friends and go walking um, at least a couple times a week because it's so important for me to just get out to be in nature and then to have that time to connect and talk with friends that makes a really big difference for me even now so what i would say yes to more often is the second part of this and i thought of that show say yes to the dress i think it's a show i've never seen it. i don't really we don't really have tv but um i would as a young mom say yes to the mess And what I mean by that, we don't like messes, right? Because messes mean we have to clean them up. But let your little kids explore and let them open your eyes to the world in a whole new way. And it's so powerful. Sometimes we just see the mess when we come upon, you know, toilet paper strewn out everywhere or flour that's been exploded in the pantry. And these are all things that have happened in our family. But it's so cool if you just take a minute and watch what your toddler is doing. And they are learning, they're exploring, they're seeing how long is this roll of toilet paper and what can I do with it? And what does this flower feel like? And what happens when I throw it? And they are learning so many things from these messes that they're making. Sometimes I even like to set up stations that are messy. One thing that I've done in the past is fill the sink with water and just put all kinds of different utensils in there, like a strainer and a a ladle and different cups and let my little guys play in the water and they will play for such a long time because they're just exploring and figuring out what what is going to work with that messes are not the most fun part of being a mom but if you can look beyond what you have to do to clean up the mess and see what's going on in that process of learning it is really powerful and kids learn so much more from hands-on learning than they're ever going to do from a screen or a phone or a game and so I try really hard to let my little ones play and explore hands-on and not give them a device um, because I want that for them. I want them to have that exploration. Another thing that I would say yes to is I'd say yes to slowing down. I know that way too often I've been in a hurry. You know, we're trying to go somewhere and the kids want to slow down and look at a crack in the sidewalk or look at a bug. And I just am focused on where I need to get to and where I need to go and grown up concerns. And I want to say we need to be, right? You don't need to feel guilty if sometimes you have to go somewhere. But sometimes we're just in the habit of rushing. We're just in the habit of we need to go, go, go. In all reality, we can slow down and look at the bugs and pay attention. And so that's something that I've tried to do with my youngest is if I don't need to be anywhere, then slow down and pay attention and let him teach me and let him show me what he's learning. And I love that part of being a mom. The other thing that I would say yes to is say yes when people offer to help. We can say yes. It gives them an opportunity to serve. It helps us connect with other people and grow closer to them. And it helps us. We can let, you know, our friends watch our kids for a little while or help with cleaning our house or whatever it is that they offer to do for us. I remember I have a friend that lives around the street from me and I I don't love cleaning and she knows this about me and I had mentioned it 
And so one day she just came over and she said, I'm here to clean. And I let her clean my house. She deep cleaned the living room. She moved the couches. She got everything that was under them. And there was a lot under them. And I just had to like, okay, she is here to serve and let go of my embarrassment about, you know, the old apple core or whatever it was that was under the couch. Let go of that and let her serve. And I still remember that. That was years ago. And I still appreciate that. And I think that it's really powerful for us to let people serve us. We need to do that sometimes. I think a lot of times we hear about we need to serve others and that's who we want to be. We want to be that friend offering to clean the house, right? We don't want to be the one with the messy house whose friend comes over to clean. And yet it only works if there's the both of you. So I'll be the one with the messy house. If you guys want to come over and clean, come and serve. You are welcome to. There's always a mess over here. But let people help you. That's the point that I'm trying to get at there. It's important to say yes when people offer to help. So the next one is what I would say no to more often. I remember as a young mom, I would go walking and in when we first moved to the area where we're in now, I didn't have a lot of f- local friends and I would walk by myself. And on these walks, I would just be stressing out and going over and over in my mind. I knew I wanted to stay home with my babies, but I was so concerned about money. We didn't have a lot of money. We had bought this nice new house and a lot of my husband's paycheck was going to paying for the house and we didn't have a lot left to live on and things were really tight. And I would just think, okay, what can I do? What can I do? Like, how can I make money? How can I do this? And I would stress out over it. And looking back, I wish I could tell that young mom to stop stressing about the future and to just trust that it's all going to work out. Trust God that he knows what's going on with you and that he is going to help and that it's all going to be okay. That's what I wish she could have known because I wasted a lot of time and a lot of energy just worrying about the future. Let go of that worry, say no to worry and trust. The other thing that I would say no to is no to comparing. I spent a lot of time in my early days of of mothering, comparing, you know, things, comparing my body was a big one, comparing our kids, what they're doing, what other kids are doing, how they're dressed, let go of comparison. It's so important. If you struggle with comparison, then the thing that I would say to focus on instead is focus on gratitude. The more that you are grateful for what you have, the less you're going to be worried about comparing and what everyone else has. I have a quote that I love that says gratitude turns what we have into enough. So if you are comparing, you are feeling like what you have is not enough. And if you are grateful, what you have is enough. So always, always come back to that gratitude and that will help you to stop with comparing. Number four is the mindset shift I would adopt early on. Now, how many times are you in the grocery store or you're out somewhere and you see an old lady and she says, oh, just cherish every moment. It goes so fast or some version of that, right? It goes so fast. Oh, they grow up so fast. And I always, you know, you kind of want to roll your eyes at the old ladies in the grocery store because when you're living it, it doesn't go so fast when you've been up so many times in the night and when you're cleaning up messes and when you're lonely and when you're just trying to get the clothes cleaned and do all these things, it goes terribly slow. But of course... I'm an old mom and looking back, it has gone fast. And so this is what I want to say about this because it's easy for an old lady at the grocery store to say it goes fast, but cherish the moments and every day is going to be filled with good and bad moments. Focus on the joy, focus on the good, do what you can to 
remember it and record it, take pictures, write it down, focus on all those good things because they are fleeting and they're not going to last. And on the flip side of that, it does go fast. And that means those baby years that are so hard, those first, you know, couple years when it's just all you have to be all in and it's all your energy and all your mental capacity, right? At least it was for me all my physical and mental energy went into these babies and know that it goes fast, that you're not going to be there in that phase forever. You're going to get on to another phase. I never like it when people say, oh, it just gets harder when they get older. I absolutely don't believe that's true. For me, the hardest time was when they were little babies. So I'm going to be the voice that says it gets easier as they get older. Now, there are hard things at every age. I'm definitely <laughs> living the hard things of of having teenagers and elementary schoolers, middle schoolers. It's all hard, but There's nothing quite like those early days of motherhood as far as the challenge. Like you are, you are going to get through and it's really hard, but it does go fast. It's not going to be forever. And that's helpful on those really hard days. The last one is the habits that I would adopt early on. Now, I've done whole podcasts on this, but I have to mention it again, a morning routine When you have a tiny baby, it's going to look different. Your morning routine is going to look a little bit different, but it is important to do something in the morning that gets you excited and gets you out of bed, something that sets you up for a great day, and something that is daily self-care. My morning routine has changed over the years, but even when I had um, Carter, when he was tiny, I would still take at least a couple minutes to open up my scriptures, to do my yoga, to do those things that were really important to me so that I could make sure to get them in and start my day right because you never know what other chaos is going to come in your day. And so that morning routine is something crucial. If that's something you don't have going right now, look back in past episodes about a morning routine. There's a lot of good stuff about it on the podcast. If you search that out on the website or just in wherever you're listening to this podcast, another habit that I would really take very seriously is journaling. I have a friend who does a journal and she writes just pages every day. Every night she sits down and she records everything from the day and she has pictures and she is just such a master historian of keeping the record of her family. If that's you, then that's awesome. Keep going. But if all you can do at night before you go into bed is jot down, you know, a milestone that your your child had that day or a funny thing they said or a magic moment that happened, that's enough. Write it down though, because those little tender, sweet moments, you're going to forget as time goes on. And so do your best to record those and to keep a record so that you can look back. That goes along with that mindset shift of it all goes fast. Recognize that you're not always going to have this little one in your house, in your arms, and you're going to want those memories. So do what you can to record those. Along with that, taking pictures is another one. And I feel like our generation, um, this, you know, people who have smartphones, we're good at taking pictures. We're taking pictures all the time. But beyond taking pictures is do something with your pictures. Make them accessible in some way. Maybe you make a slideshow that you're able to play on your TV, or maybe it's a physical book that you print out that you your kids can look at and flip through. But keep them somewhere, do something with them so that other people besides you can have access to them so that they become a family memory and something that you can look at rather than just having them stored on your phone. And again, this is another thing that doesn't have to take forever and you don't have to spend a lot of time on. There are a lot of simple options out there to go ahead and get those in a book or on a slideshow or something like that. The last one is to create special rituals. So this is the last habit that I would adopt early on. Special rituals throughout the day. So just these touchstone moments with your kids. Rituals of bedtime. 
rituals of when they get up in the morning, doing the same things every day. When they get a little older and they're leaving the house for the day, going to preschool or kindergarten, rituals as they leave so that they can always know what to expect. And they're going to remember those things because you do them over and over and over. And those rituals become really meaningful to both of you and work to strengthen your connection from mother to child. So I hope that these five things have been helpful that we've talked about today, what to focus on most, especially in the early years, what I would have said yes to more often, what I would have said no to more often, the mindset shift I would make early on and the habits I would adopt early on. The thing that I want to say for just find my final takeaway from this is the biggest thing is not to worry about all the little things. Enjoy the little moments and enjoy this time when your kids are little, even when it's hard. Acknowledge, recognize, hard is going to be a part of it, but enjoy the little moments. That is my thought for you, and I'd love to know what your takeaway is. What one little thing are you going to do differently or think about differently because of the things that I've shared with you today? Let me know on Facebook or Instagram at Moms Who Know Podcast. If you like this episode, share it with a friend, leave a review. Those things help me so much. And I just love hearing from you guys. I really do. I love when there is a conversation and a connection. Reach out, let me know, and I will see you next time on Moms Who Know.